Hello everyone, Fifon is with you. Everyone watched the second part of the cartoon about Puss in Boots, but how many watched the first part? I think most watched. Today we'll talk about why the second part has become so popular, and why it is much more interesting and better than the first. Let's start with the most logical thing which is the first thing that catches your eye. This is naturally the general level of animation, textures, and more. After all, the difference between them is as much as 12 years. In the first part, they use completely different technologies, and in general there is a different style. Then DreamWorks was chasing realism. Maybe they had a race with Disney. But in the second part, this race has clearly stopped. With the release of Spider-Man through the universes, everyone saw how the picture is changing, and, in principle, the cartoon. When 3DD animation is supplemented with hand-drawn effects, of course, DreamWorks could not help but use this idea, and began to introduce such a style with Puss in Boots. The next will be the fifth part of Shrek and so on, until everyone gets tired of it. So far, this style is something new for everyone. Although it is already five years old, I don't know about others, but I really like this style. But in general, DreamWorks has raised the level of animation and textures over these 12 years. And besides, 4K video has appeared. Just look at the cat 12 years ago, and now, I think the new cat is much better. Yes, it has become more cartoony, but it's still a cartoon, and not a movie. Plus it may not be familiar to many, because they have been looking at the old cat all their lives. He was in three pots of Shrek, in his own series. We must not forget about the shirt films dedicated to the cat. The next thing we will discuss the characters. If we take the characters from the first part, then we will understand that the first part lose is even in terms of the number of main characters. There were only five people who were constantly in the center of events. But in the second part, let's count in turn. Three a bear and a Goldilocks, a cat in boots with a soft-footed pussycat and a Perito, Jack Horner and a wolf, and those nine characters that lead us through the story. Besides, these are not just characters, each of them was very well revealed as individuals. Let's take the cat. He is the main character of the cartoon, but also in his opinion, he is the main character of his world. His self-conceit is so high, it could even reach the moon. He did not appreciate any of his lives, for which he almost became unraveled with his last ninth life. In the end he changed his attitude not only to life, but also to himself. He began to understand that it was impossible to be so narcissistic and changed. What can you say about the cat from the first part? I can't really say anything about him. He just fell for the belief about the gold-bearing goose and was going to steal it. He doesn't have any good goal. For example, to regain the trust of people in his city. The first thing he cares about is the money for which he went. Agree. Not a very interesting goal. Which, moreover, practically does not reveal the character in any way. Now let's take the antagonists, the wolf from the second part. This is the perfect villain. Of course he would not be so cool without the reaction of the cat, which makes the wolf so creepy. But still, he is death itself, which was touched by a cat who did not appreciate life at all. So he decides to end the cat or not. As I said in one of the previous videos, I think that the wolf was just trying to show the value of life to the cat. Because of this he becomes even better as a character. And how can a talking egg surprise us? substituting a cat, forcing him to help him rob a bank. He harbors a grudge against him and decides to take revenge on him. Besides taking revenge on the city dwellers who, in fact, did nothing to him, Humpty is a very strange and not interesting character who besides, he changed simply because the cat told him how cool he was as a child. It's so banal and not interesting that I don't know what else to say. And if you take the second part, there was another wonderful character, although no, not one, but even two. These are Perito and Jack Horner. Goldilocks and the Three Bears are also good characters, but still not like these two. Perito and Jack are characters that are 100% different from each other. Perito is the kindest, and Jack is the most evil. Perito does not seem to know what it is to be evil. The story of his life is a very sad situation, but he talks about it like the most fun story in life. Maybe he does not understand that they just got rid of him, but he perfectly understands what he lost the whole family. But he was not sad. I'm not sure that he is generally adequate, but this makes him still cool. Jack Horner, on the other hand, is the most terrible person in the whole world. He absolutely does not appreciate human or any other life. He himself destroyed almost his entire team and even thought that this might be wrong. Puss in Boots 2 is generally a cartoon in which there were a lot of deaths. Naturally, it was shown in such a way that it would not injure the psyche of children, but still there are deaths. 
and just because they decided to take such a step, they had access to such a character like Jack, who easily killed his entire team without remorse. This is how Jack is remembered. He is the most indifferent character not only in the cartoon, but in the entire history of animation. If you think differently, write about it in the comments. By the way, subscribe to the channel. There's something else that makes Bus in Boots 2 stand out and downplay the first part, and that's with regards to the animation. Small details that immerse us much better in the atmosphere of what is happening in the cartoon. For example, the same hand-drawn effects. Just the presence of such a detail immediately makes a fight or some epic moment even more epic. If this was used in the first part, maybe no one I would not appreciate such an approach, because then they just left the usual drawing. It is also a very important detail. These are sounds. For example, take the moment when a cat starts having a panic attack. Even those who have never felt it were able to feel this horror on themselves. A strong heartbeat from which coldness goes through the body. In general, small details are very important. Although they are small, without them it would never be possible to achieve that immersion in what is happening. All those standing up cat hairs, heartbeats, hand-drawn effects. All of this is what makes the cartoon what it is. Among other things, the finale, in the first part. The finale was rather an interesting and strange. The goose simply destroyed the bridge, took her child, and the Humpty crashed and allegedly became golden. But where did the openings of his mouth go? Where to cut his legs, arms, where everything this? But in the second part, the finale is simply beautiful. Changing his attitude to life, the cat managed to fight with the wolf on equal terms, because of which the wolf decided that he no longer had the right to take his life. Jack could simply be left in an endless bag. But no, again using small details, such as cookies, Horner was able to get out. Cat Kissa and Goldilocks decide to destroy the wish, because they all changed and realized that they had everything they needed, but they could not leave such strong magic. So after destroying the card, Jack dies in a stream of magic from the wish star. Goldilocks with the bears go live the dream life of each of them at Jack's factory. Well, the cat with Purito and Kissa decide to visit Shrek in the Three Ninth Kingdom. Each character went their own way and revealed as much as possible. In general, the ending of Puss in Boots 2 one of the best that I have seen in recent times. That's all for me, since almost no one is looking to the end, everyone for now.